Nice. There we go. Let's do another one. Now let's go vertically. Uh, if you put friction in here, it's this, you just get this. Oh, let's do that then, actually. That's a, somebody put that in there. That's a great, you know, what if it's not? What if I have friction? So same question, same. Uh, I will say it is 10 meters per second when it hits here. I guess I, no, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put that spring. How far do I want this to be? That's going to get compressed 22 centimeters. So I'll make this 22 centimeters, 20 centimeters. Okay, 20 centimeters before it hits the spring. My coefficient of kinetic friction is going to be 0 0.1 just to make, no, 0 0.2. I'll make that 0 0.2. 0 0.15. There we go. Everything else is the same. Now by how much we want to spring. Well, same thing. Non-conservative work changes the energy. But now I have non-conservative work. Non-conservative work is the work done by friction. Then that's going to be the change in energy, which is going to be E final minus E initial. Okay. Notice I've always done that. When I said zero equals delta E. That's very much E final minus E initial, and then add E to both sides. E initial equals E final. I'm doing that mathematical step excuse me, in my head. I'm not pulling out a new equation, right? I only have one equation and all I do is unpack it. I'm unwrapping. I'm not bringing new things to the table. Work done by friction is the force of friction. The force of friction is going to act over this. There's my force of friction. Force of friction is gonna act over that 20 centimeters and then by whatever that delta x is. How long does the force of friction act? We have another delta, right? We have another delta x. F uh, work is force delta x, but now we have multiple delta x's. You've got to keep them together. This is the delta x of the spring. Delta X of friction is 20, well, oh, that should be 20 centimeters, ah, plus the Delta X of the spring, but that needs to be 0.2 meters, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 meters, plus the Delta X of the spring times the cosine of the force of friction is this way, the delta x is that way, it's 180 degrees. Don't forget to put that in there. Yes. Somebody have something? No? All right. Equals. Now, this is going to get really long. E final. I have gravitational potential energy, spring potential energy, translational kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, final, minus gravitational potential energy plus spring potential energy plus translational kinetic energy plus rotational kinetic energy, initial. It's not rotating. Pick the easy stuff first. This one and this one are the same. So that minus that is zero. Finally, the spring is compressed. One half K delta X squared, it's delta X in the spring. That delta X, oh, okay, two answers. That stops. Minus, 
Now over here, the spring's not compressed, but it is moving minus one half mv squared. And then that's going to equal negative one. This one needs a negative friction. Zero point two half minus delta x in the s direction. I'm gonna make sure everything is uh work is forcing distance in this particular. Okay. <clears throat> K is that. I don't know delta X. M is that. V initial is that. I got to figure out what the force of friction is. Force of friction is mu times the normal force. Uh, normal force. Normal force, force of gravity, some of the forces in the y direction is ma, that's zero. Normal force minus the force of gravity equals zero. The normal force equals the force of gravity, which is mg. So I'm gonna add, oh my gosh. Push everything over the one side. Uh, maybe you were right, Srikar. I think this is why I don't give you too many friction surfaces. All right, negative 0 0.2 times mu mg minus mu mg delta xs equals one half k delta x s squared. I gotta plug all this stuff in. All right. Move all of this over to one side. Zero equals one half a delta x squared plus mu m g delta x. My x squared, my x plus zero point two mu m g minus one half mv squared. This is a constant. All right. All right. And why is it negative 0.2? That cosine is not, it's the cosine of 180. That's negative one. So f times 0.2 times negative one is that. f times delta x times negative one is that. All right, I'm gonna copy this down on my sheet of paper and then I'm gonna shift cameras. So I now have zero equals one half K delta X squared plus mu MG delta X plus 0 0.2 mu g minus one half mv squared. That looks right. Now I'm going to shift cameras. Zoom in a little bit. Here we go. Oops. Whoop. There we are. Now I'm going to substitute in my answers or my values. This was 8,000. Yes, yes. Delta X squared plus my mu is 0 0.15, 0 0.15. 
M is four. G is nine point eight times X plus zero point two. Zero point one five times four. G is nine point eight minus one M, which is four. And B, which is 10 meters per second, 10 squared. Now, I want you to look at how I add this because this is the importance of explicitly substituting. Now, if I start to work through and I make a mistake, I'm going to be able to come back here and say, is this, did I plug the correct values into the correct places to get the correct thing? This is more important. The once I have this, I can actually just type this into a calculator and say delta x equals these two numbers. I know I'm going to have two numbers because I've got a quadratic. Right? The rest of this is algebra that I really don't care about. But now I got to, now I just have to sit and do some algebra. Okay, where's my eraser? My eraser. Where's my friend? I don't need you, friend. Don't do anything about my eraser. I just want to get out of the way. Oh, there's a oh, there. Okay. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Here we go. Know that at this point, actually, once we hit this point, there is no more. Actually, once we hit. Yeah, once we hit this equation, actually the step before this, there's no more physics to do. This is all algebra, four thousand squared plus. Point one five times four times nine point eight is three eight. Those of you who are following along now I have to make sure that my algebra is reasonable. Plus two Right, that looks beautiful. Okay, I can't really see my. Okay. So my quadratic is. Minus 200. Two hundred times one seven six. Uh, this here, this is the work lost. This is the work lost from the sliding before it hit the spring. This is the work that's being. This is the. Uh, this is friction removing energy before it makes it to the spring. And this is friction removing energy while the spring is sliding, while the spring is being compressed. All right, so now I need to have another, I gotta go on to the internet to solve this thing. I guess you could use your quadratic formula, um, which is, Quadratic formula calculator. Calculator soup. Coefficient A is here's A. Here's AX squared plus BX plus C. So A is 4,000. 
B is 5.88 and C is negative 19 eight. Calculate. Oh, nice. I get two answers. Thank you. I got two, two, four, two, two, four. Nice. Is two, two, and negative zero point two, two. No, it's not a whole lot of difference there. Point two, two, and point two, four. So what are those now? We have to look to figure out what those answers mean. One of them wrong. That's nice. All right, so everything's going this way. That means this way is my positive direction. So it will be compressed plus whatever the positive one is, 0.222 meters. So four, oh, it was also 0.22. Must have rounded off the same, same spot. So it's not gonna be significantly different. Um, 